Part 2, AWS Fundamentals. In this part, we're going to look at some of the terminology and concepts for AWS. We're going to cover services, zones and regions, the management console, EC2 instances, the images and the AMIs, Amazon Machine Images, and storage, and a few basics on networks and security. First up then, services. Amazon provide a range of different services. And a service can be thought of as a type of work a particular cloud resource provides. They're all listed on this management console. These services are also grouped into categories like compute, storage, database, and application services. Next, zones and regions. In the top right corner, you'll see a list of zones these are used to reduce latency between the end users and the services that are provided. Amazon provisions these services in data centers located in different regions. When you start a service, you'll want to make sure that you have the correct region selected so that the service is started in your region. This is also important when it comes to creating your virtual private clouds, security groups, key pairs. They're all linked to a particular region. Select your region and stick with that region. The management console. When you select a service, the management console changes to present a number of different panels. In the EC2 service management console screen, you'll see we've got the nav bar at the top. We've got the region selector again. We've got a navigation panel on the left hand side and the content page. It's from here that you'll start, configure, and manage, manage the services you need. EC2 then. This is an abbreviation for Elastic Compute Cloud. Essentially, this is the service that delivers resizable computing capacity. When you select EC2 in the management console, you're given the capability to start instances, configure them, and manage those virtual machines in Amazon's cloud. So each C2 instances from the management console, you can run up and configure virtual machine instances, which will run all sorts of different operating systems with different hardware platforms and a range of different default software installed. Each virtual machine you run up is referred to as an instance. In this example, we have two virtual machine instances that we've run up and configured. EC2 instance types. Each instance you run up will be part of a specific type. A type defines the CPU, memory, storage and networking capability of the instance. Each instance type is then given a name and more details about those instance types can be found on the Amazon Web Service website. As part of this course, we'll be focusing on using the T2 dot micro instance types which have one virtual CPU, six CPU credits per hour and one gigabyte memory with EBS storage. Images and AMIs. Each time you launch an instance and you start this virtual machine you don't want to have to install and configure the operating system and additional software from scratch. To save you building the instance from scratch, Amazon gives you the capability to start the machine with a predefined image already installed. These images are known as AMIs. For the purpose of this course, we're sticking to free tier AMIs. And if you check this box, you'll see all of the free tier eligible AMIs. So for example, we've got Amazon Linux AMI. Again, a list of all the different AMI types can be found on the Amazon website with details of all the different capabilities for each AMI. Elastic block store and volumes. A virtual machine is no good without storage. Amazon provide a huge number of options here. The most common is known as EBS, Elastic Block Storage. EBS is again another Amazon service 
and this service provides storage volumes that can be attached to running instances. The data stored is persistent, e.g. the data is retained across reboots and shutdowns, and each EBS volume can persist independently from the life of the instance if need be. In the EBS volume screen, you can see a list of your volumes along with a unique ID. And if you scroll to the right, you can see which instances they are attached to. Likewise, if you view your instances, you'll see in the instance details screen a list of the devices, the EBS devices, that are configured and attached to this instance. Again, full details of the types of different storage and their characteristics can be found on the Amazon AWS website. Network and security. When you come to start creating your instances in a minute, you'll notice that each instance is created within a virtual private cloud. The idea of these virtual private clouds can be found for the each individual instance and full details about the virtual private cloud is defined under the VPC service and the management console. When you view your virtual private clouds, you'll see the VPC that was created automatically when we created the instances and from within there you can see the details for that specific virtual private cloud. Every instance we create at this stage will be created within our virtual private cloud. We then need to dictate access to machines with public IP addresses in DNS. Every instance you create is placed in your VPC automatically. This VPC is essentially the same as the network you'd find for your physical PCs and laptops in your office. Just be aware that by default your instances are not given public IP addresses and host names. Everything is defined by default with local VPC and IP addresses. For example, when you look at your running hosts and you select an instance, you'll see that no public IP or public DNS information is provided. You have to configure this separately. Security groups. Built into the whole AWS framework are some pretty clever security capabilities. Key to running our instances is the concept of security groups that are defined under the network and security entry in the navigation panel. Each time you start an instance, you specify the security groups that you want to associate to the instance and the instance inherits the rules from that specific security group. Those rules, for example, might be firewall rules that dictate inbound connections for HTTP from a particular source machine. Key pairs. AWS uses key pairs to encrypt and decrypt login details. These are the login details that you'll need to access both your Windows and Unix instances. The concept here is that we create a public and a private key. Amazon encrypts the passwords with the public key and when it provides you with the encrypted password the only person that can decrypt it is the person holding the private key, which is you. And that's it. 11 concepts that you need to grasp, 11 concepts that we'll cover in more detail as we go through the practical aspects of this module. So in the next part, part three, we'll look at configuring security groups and from there, we'll start creating images and using key pairs to build up our automated test environment running on AWS.